Hey everyone, welcome back to Contractor Evolution. Benji here coming at you from the studio. When it comes to solving business problems, there will always be hundreds of theoretical or formulaic sounding answers floating around out there. And there's certainly value in these more textbook concepts, but one of the best ways that entrepreneurs learn is simply by listening to how other entrepreneurs have solved the same problem. The problem we're gonna dissect in today's episode is a recruiting and hiring one. So today on the show, we're really excited to have Brett Farrington. He's the owner of Renova Exteriors and Holiday Spirit Lighting in Seattle, Washington. Now, in the late summer and early fall of 2021, Brett was faced with a massive recruiting gap. His projections for the year's sales and production pretty clearly showed he would need about 16 staff to get through his busy season and execute on everything. Now, this created a pretty real oh shit moment for Brett because at the time, he only had four people on payroll. What's really cool about this epiphany and then the steps he took thereafter is his complete refusal to blame external factors or feel sorry for himself. He faced a seemingly insurmountable challenge and instead of comforting himself with the all too often used excuses, millennials suck, COVID has, has ruined the workforce, no one wants to work, um, the list goes on. He instead put his head down and got to it. Now, I don't want to give away too many spoilers because I really want you to hear it directly from him, but some of the highlights for me uh, were the way he reverse engineered the metrics within his hiring funnel. Brett crunched the numbers and got super clear on what he needed to do as far as applicants generated, um, how many setup calls he would need, need to do, how many interviews had to be conducted, all in order to hit his very explicit goal of hiring 14 new people. The other thing I loved was the way he built his work with us page on his actual website. He's got really high quality video content, really nice graphic design, and a very low friction application process that makes it extremely easy for the job seeker to apply. Lastly, the thing I loved was how he structured and incentivized his employee referral program to deliver excellent results. So let's dive into how Brett was able to hire 14 quality new employees in a matter of months. You're watching Contractor Evolution, where we unpack the systems, tactics, and skills you need to take your fast-growing contracting business to the next level. You're here to learn what it takes to scale up, work less, and increase profitability. You've come to the right place. Stay tuned to learn what separates the new breed of contractor from the old school and welcome to your ultimate guide on the business of contracting. Hey, just before we jump into things, I wanted to let you know you can get the free resources that we talk about in this episode in the show description. So hit pause right now, go download them, and they'll be waiting in your inbox by the time we finish this episode. So Brett, I cannot wait to get into this story. We've, we've, we've prepped a little bit offline. There's so much meaty stuff to get into here. I think a really important point to start with though, for our listeners is just briefly explain like Renova holiday spirit, specifically like the industry and in, how your business works and why it in particular has these huge recruiting gaps that need to be solved. Yeah, absolutely. Benji. Thank you. Um, we started holiday spirit lighting in 2009 as a seasonal business. And as that built momentum, it was pretty easy to recruit for. I was in the truck, easy to get a couple guys, no problem. As that business continued to grow, those guys turned into crew leads, got a few more trucks, et cetera, et cetera. Still pretty easy to find people. Their friends jumped in the trucks. Um, as that built, that was in 2009. Halfway along our journey in 2016 or so, we realized we had to turn this into a full year round business where it's Renova exterior detailing comes in. And so we're going to do those cleaning services, home detailing services, w window cleaning, gutter cleaning, pressure washing, exactly. like you're beautifying the exterior, just make it look good, make yeah, it look good, just making it look good. So holiday spirit is like this crazy crunch time during when does it start? So yeah. September, October. Yeah. We get into it traditionally in October. We start installing lights. We had for for years and years and years, it was like nine or 10 weeks where we had to make hay for the whole year. Right. That's it. That's it. That installation season. You set them all up before Christmas. Mm -hmm. You tear them down and take them down in January as fast as you can. And then we go to what? Thailand and we go to, East, yeah, we <laughs> Off but we go. but more recently, you've added Renova Exteriors to to give you a full season of work so that you can transition your Christmas light 
workers into uh, exterior like like maintenance workers as well. Just like it, it, it balances out the year as far as revenue. Balance, that's the word right there. hundred percent. Yeah, we did that in an effort to also offer a lot more opportunity to our people. But there is still this really natural like uptick of like, whoa, we're getting into it's September, it's October. We've got a lot of lights to install. Um, there's all there's usually a part of the year where you guys really need all hands on deck. And that kind of creates these urgent recruiting gaps and the one we're going to talk about today, that's correct? The Okay, so at what point, t- take us back a, a, a few years, like at what point did you realize you needed to up your recruiting game? It was, like you said, about 18 months ago. It wasn't this most recent lighting season, but the one before. And we went through the normal process. I had my normal team in place and we had our normal recruitment tactics going. And we're like, okay, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Every year we figure this out. Yeah. We're going to get there. And what happened like most things that was a tough year in 2020 we started finding that whether it was people we, we fired one of our best leads a week later someone gets injured a week after that someone's has to go and take care of their family because they have a covid situation and so we had a plan we had a plan bta we set up we had a strategic plan um started making some adjustments and deviations on that um the moment that i think really was like okay we need, we need to do something different here is when I had a meeting with the whole team and I was like, okay guys, we're on plan D right now (laughs) and I have an E and an F and I don't want to go there. And we ended up on plan E. I was on an awning in downtown Seattle, gluing some C sevens on top of an awning and by myself. And I had a lot of time to think and I was like, okay, we need to do this You're differently because like everything I live in the, absolutely living the entrepreneur dream for sure. What was plan F? Plan F was my partner, Charlotte, would come out of retirement and she would, she hadn't been worked in the business for five or six years since our first baby was born and she would be out doing maintenance and I would run a crew. Like it was, it so was we, getting close. It we was didn't really, get there, but it didn't. was really close. And she offered, she's like, I, if you need me to get out there, I can do that. So you're, you know, you're, you're on, you know, you're up a ladder, you're on some, some lift gluing lights onto a building. Going, a okay, time. Yeah, yeah, this is totally what I signed up for. <laughs> Um, you realize, okay, this needs to get better. This needs to be more predictable. I don't want to be in this situation again in the future. From there, how did you begin to strategize with Coach Ryan? How did you get your head around this problem? Let's dive into some of the the upfront work that you did to start solving this. Yeah, right on. Um, so going into 2021, so it was after this season. We survived the season. Right. We're happy to have made it through. But it came at a cost. I had to ask my guys out of, you know, my sales guys like, yeah, you can sell and sell and sell, but does us no good if you if we can't produce this work? So I spent that capital, leadership capital, and said, we're never going to do that again. And so 2021, one of the main critical numbers was like, if we can get field staff for the biggest time of the year where we do two-thirds of our revenue in the, those 12 weeks or whatever for next holiday lighting season, we'll be good. So we identified the problem and we began working backwards from there to say, we need X amount of people in the field. In this case, we, we identified, I think we need 16, right? How many did you have at that point? Well, when we came up with the plan, we had eight. Yeah. So that was nice. Yeah. Right. We're like, okay, we're halfway there. That was at the beginning of the year. Well, as plans play out by the time we got to August, when it was go time, we were down to four and we almost fired two of those guys. So we were, teetering between two and four and we needed 16 and that was in august okay of this past year so you're you're like you're you're down 12 to 14 people potentially going into the busiest time of the year i just want to paint really paint the picture is it those are the gaps yeah big yeah yeah what'd you guys do How, how, how did we how did we begin to fix this so the first step actually i feel like was a new website for Holly Spirit Lighting mm-hmm. and to dedicate one third, there's two, three landing pages, residential, customer, commercial, and then this recruitment join the team piece. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And from there, honestly, that propelled all these other tactics, right? Um, from there, it became really clear we needed job postings for all the respective jobs that we had to offer, not just currently that we needed, but also the steps up so we could show a ladder of progression for people. Like actually like demonstrating a career path. You yeah. yeah. Here, we, but you there could. was actually five positions that we could, we put on that, that landing page right away. Take us through like the, the brain dump of all the tactics you've mentioned. Um, I don't know if you've brought up Laura yet, but I'd, I, I really want you to t- 
talk about sort of how you included Laura in this mix. Um, uh, how did you and uh, you and Coach Ryan and then Laura like really lay out on paper? This is first of all the problem. These are all of the things that we could potentially try. Having Laura come into it and switching the who was the point person on our recruitment, who previously was Connor, and he was he was our guy who was in production, right? So he's in charge of production. He was in charge of training. He was in charge of um, hiring. He's like a field staff, Connor. He's a yeah. He's a, he's he's in the field, but he's managing the whole field. But we were putting way too much stuff on him, so he became this huge bottleneck. He Especially. was also recruiting prior to he, this. He, he was responsible well, that was, for it. It worked really well because he sent out a Facebook message and to his friends and his family and their friends, and all of a sudden we had a you know six, eight, ten guys that worked. Yeah. Well, that the previous year was like, okay, we're burning Connor out. This isn't working. Right. Okay, let's switch. This needs to be a team effort, a. But mostly, I need Laura in the office, who's our office manager, to like take on this project, and she's gonna run and execute this whole campaign, and we're gonna work together on it. Mm -hmm. And a key piece to that was yeah we did a brain dump and we're like what are all the things like we've we've had success with some of these things internal incentive programs we've had um we've had signing bonuses um we've done well there was really there's pieces like of course the market that we're in we had to increase wages we had to we had to beef up our benefits we had to make this thing sing you know why, why did you have to increase wages and benefits specifically in seattle because it's expensive and that's just the trend that, you, you know, as we were doing the things that used to work, put your ad up on Craigslist. That's just, it. We, we're getting less and less response to the point where it's like you put an ad up on Craigslist and it's on page five by noon. It was an absolute waste of time and money. D d you just felt uncompetitive in that market? Like it just, this is not an appealing enough offer compared to, I don't know, like an, what an Amazon driver could make? Like well, you, you the truth is, yeah, we have, our, our competition is, is, anyone who has a job right in, in in that market it you know it's an entry level position for a young person can you go through a little bit one thing we talked about offline that i thought was really really cool is how you kind of like went through the process of reverse engineering the funnel you you under, you know you start with a, okay we have a gap of 12 to f say 14 people like we need to f we need to get this many people onboarded and trained pretty quickly how did you then start to devise the other goals around, okay, that means we're going to need to make this many hires and do this many interviews and get this many applicants. Like how, how did you kind of think in a linear fashion to go from this acute problem to an actual plan that you could then start executing? It was actually pretty simple. Um, we, I got in a meeting and Laura and I talked about this is where we're trying to get to, let's say 14 people. How many actual decent interviews do we need to have to get to that? Let's say it's twice as many or three times. How many candidates or applications do we need to get in, including all the nonsense and junk? Mm -hmm. Let's say that's two times, three times as much. It's like, okay, we need 75 you know, candidates or applicants, right. something like that, right? Making educated guesses on, on these conversions through each step. Yeah, and we went backwards and we looked at kind of traditionally what, what those conversions were and said, okay, this, this, this should get us there. Cool. Right? Yeah. I just want to highlight the importance of that. So building a plan is really the starting point for a lot of this. And I find so many leaders and entrepreneurs don't spend enough time building a recruiting plan uh, when you have a task of this magnitude in front of you. And so it reminds me, this is actually very similar numbers. So I was just thinking back to the situation. So this is now the fall of 2010. I am running a painting company and um, headed into 2011. I needed 18 divisional managers that are running different areas. And I had five in that fall. So this is like late August, early September, very similar situation yeah. coming into about mid January. I needed 18 and, um, Huge gap. Um, Benji, this would have been like a year, I think, before you and I met. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I remember looking at that recruiting plan and how daunting that seems. And one of the things that that really helped me on the note of building a plan is, is I basically broke it down into the weeks that I had left. So if it was late August, by mid-January, I need to basically go like plus 13 in my case. And, and I kind of knew the the recruiting funnel and how it works right and what all the steps are because i have for me to hire someone i was typically taking them through like two interviews and prior to that there was a setup call which we've talked about in the ultimate hiring funnel and prior to that there's an application so i kind of broke down the ratios if i need to hire 13 people how many second interviews is that how many first interviews is that how yeah. many initial interview setup 
meet this con- phone conversations is that and how many applications is that? So I kind of broke that down based on my ratios, sort of like you would in like a sales funnel, right? And then I looked at, holy shit, this is this is a lot uh, over the course of the <laughs> That's always happens months. by the time you do all the multiples. You do all like, the multiples well, you, going This back, is a big right? number. Yeah, you're like, well, you know, 13 hires is like, let's say 26 second interviews, which is maybe 35 first interviews, which is like 60 initial uh, interview setup meetings, which is like 180 applications, easy for instance, easily. right? So I'm like, easily. So yeah. how do how do I Crest get that? that? In a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good luck. So how do I get to that? And one of the things I did, um, and and I had a really really good uh, like supervisor that I was reporting to at that time, in the construct of his large painting company, and um, and I remember one of the things that I was taught is like, how do you break that down into week by week plan, and mm-hmm. how many weeks do I have? Mm-hmm. If it's like the third week a week of August, we got to have this many managers hired by 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 mid January and then creating a tactical plan for every one of those weeks. Right. So if I need to generate a certain number of applications in a certain in a given week, I need to do a certain number of interview setup meetings. I've got to do a certain number of first interviews, second interviews, make a certain number of hires. How am I going to get all that flow and all those applicants? And then you start applying strategies of what am I going to do in every single week to be able to hit that. Mm. Yeah, this sounds very familiar. Yeah, I remember we, we're week in, week out, Laura and I are talking about like, okay, get a new post out. We need this yeah, many, I need 35 ca- we need applications this many this candidates week. right now. Yeah, I need 35 like, applications. It's August week. one now. We we got to yeah. get somewhere by totally November one, right? Yeah. So it's it's super important. But what I will say, like the Cole's notes of this, when I think back to that, to that whole experience in the fall of 2010. Um, just the amount of energy I applied to recruiting at that time. I, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've worked hard since obviously, but I can't, I still to this day can't remember a time when I've applied so much energy to one singular thing mm-hmm. like I did in that, in that one fall, yeah. September, October, November, December, I hit it so hard. I was, I was literally recruiting like 50 hours a week. Yeah. And I think the parallel I want to make, which is, we say this all the time, but, but recruiting and hiring is fundamentally the same process as, as marketing and selling and Mm -hmm. the little grade eight math exercise we just did to sort of come up with these goals for applicants, goals for calls, goals for interviews. You would do the exact same thing when you're planning out a sales plan for the year. Like this is, this is the exact same funnel. A lot of the same tools are used instead of a new customer, you end up with a new hire. And I just would like to make that comparison. I think for some people, it's a bit of a light bulb moment when they realize how, how, how well they already know this. It's just like, they're, not applying, they're just like not, they're not applying, applying it. it it's like, thing. this is the same thing. The difference though, what one thing to keep in mind though, the difference is like in a marketing and sales environment, if you run a landscaping company, you're competing against other landscaping companies in this space, you're competing with every employer. Any of it. Yeah. Right. Any, the Amazons that, yeah, totally. you're yeah, in absolutely Seattle, that's a good point. every other, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's a different, and another point in terms of the marketing comparison to recruiting, what about the value of one good hire mm-hmm. and oh. the power of that? Oh my God. Like if you start thinking about it in those terms, all of a sudden you're like, whoa, we are not putting the proper energy and focus into totally. this piece. A lot more valuable than one good customer. Oh, one good, one great customer doesn't even come close to not even close. Uh, someone who shows up Monday through Friday. Yeah, no, it's like it does work. Multiple of like many hundreds time mm-hmm. more valuable Especially to Especially to, to retain them. Yeah. For sure. So here's a question. Like you, you've talked about like really getting clear on some of your, your top of funnel metrics. These need to be hit by when. Was it you doing a lot of these initial calls and like doing the actual work or was it you and Laura? Was it fully de- dedicated to her? Like who drove a lot of this top of funnel activity? I'd say Laura did the vast, vast majority of it actually. Yeah. So we went through the process kind of at the beginning and said, okay, let's look at the ideal. Let's look at our past employees who were, who, who was awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who did we, who did we love? Who do we really like? Like and the why? specific individuals. Yeah. Like down to like, what did they like to do? Yeah. Oh, they, okay. They're rock climbers. They're skiers. They're, they're van people, you know, yeah, totally. <laughs> like th- that was more of a seasonal tilt to it, but th- we're still hiring for seasonal sure. employee at this point. Right. Did you actually do this? Did you kind of go, did you, did you sit down with old employees or current employees and just like revisit, wait, what makes you tick? What do you do for fun? What are your core values? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? It was pretty easy. We still work with a lot of the same people yeah. that are our best people, right? They yeah. just advanced past that, that level in the business. So we're like, okay, take Connor. Why, why? He's a workhorse. Great. We need people who know yeah. how to work. Yeah. We need people who aren't scared of the weather, right? So what, with that information, how did you revise the ideal candidate profile? Like were there actual edits that you made to that document? And then were there subsequent edits that you made to the job postings? How did that like, Hey, we're going to give this another look. I want to revisit my ideal candidate profiles in the past. Like, how does that, how did it improve your, your postings this time around? 
it improved him. Yeah, it improved him greatly. It was huge. It was made such a big difference because we knew who we're fishing for, right? Who mm-hmm. we're targeting, who we're hunting, whatever. We're like, oh, this is this is the person. And then so when we went to the next step and we're like, okay, let's look at our job postings because that definitely could use some work. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was the next step in the process. And we started catering and started thinking from having that empathy for the candidate. Mm. Be like, wh- how do we sell to them this job and this role, right? And and what what's going to be really appealing to them and why? Yeah, Th- that switch in the angle of it's not just a job posting. It's, it is like a marketing piece where you're marketing to a very specific type of individual yeah. is a very important mental switch, right? So when we look at uh, just coming back to Brett's story here of uh, doing this this deep dive into what we call an ideal candidate profile, like what the other people on his team, what they're like, the ones that have been really good. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really who you're marketing to. And this this job posting is really like a piece of, of marketing collateral that needs to sell to that person. And, it, and just for everyone listening, if you haven't checked out our Ultimate Hiring Funnel series on Contractor Evolution, check out episode one and two. It's a real deep dive with Josie Ann on this whole ideal candidate profile development and building a job posting super important piece but um the point is this is all like a real marketing and sales exercise right that's that's all it is yeah um before we move on what roles uh like just like what are they called is it is it a technician is it a crew leader is it an operations manager there's 14 people what roles were you were you looking for specifically we had entry level techs Okay. That would do lighting, at least seasonal lighting here. And if they were were good, then they'd turn around and train in for Renova services and did exterior detailing as well. And then we had mm-hmm. lead techs who would run run that crew of one or three one to three people. And then we actually had these two other auxiliary roles, a maintenance person who did service calls, and mm-hmm. we also had the staging role to prep mm-hmm. the lights for, for the customer. Um and within there there was also another like a supervisor type like a, a, a kind of a boss lead role of other leads. Yep. And as you were planning these, um, I just had a question for you. So with Laura in the office, what did your like m- like management rituals week to week look like? Was this like a weekly focus? Like what, what was the level of, of focus and rhythm on an ongoing basis through these months? Yeah, when we started in August 1st, when we k- kicked off the plan, yep. we were going through the work of getting that website on point and, and, the, and really the work to get that website on point was all these pieces, right? Uh, job postings, then get the um, the roles and the breakdowns, etc. Um, but that was a weekly meeting, a recruitment meeting. A one, it started off at one hour, and I got a Trello board set up, and I'm like, "All right, here's here's the stages," and we start moving these things. And I would assign Laura, like, "Here's the first stage. We need we need new job postings." Yeah. Okay. So let's look at that. Next week she'd come back. I put we held tension on that. She came back with the job posting. I then would take that. And I was like, okay, what can I do here to like put energy out there into there? And what I did is I actually shared that like with my networks. So, Mm. and I did it at first, I did it just in the very obvious and selfish, like, Hey everyone, we're hiring. We need, you know, and and these people, and traditionally those networks were not a great source of employees. Like they were coming from a different angle. There are other professionals. And, but what I started to realize, I was like, Oh, wait a minute. There's an opportunity here where these people are my friends. I know them. So I twisted it and I said, hey, could you give me some feedback on this job posting? Uh, like to use them as a feedback loop. On yes. Facebook exactly. or, or uh, a group chat or who did you, like, who'd you actually take this to? I took this to a few um, networking groups. Like I was in a B, my BNI group oh, okay, and, cool. and another networking group. Um, any And other like emerging leaders classes that I'd been with other so entrepreneurs. So other, other business people. All you're, business. You're all, get, primarily other business people. Yeah, you're, exactly. You're getting the eyeballs of other small business owners on mm-hmm. your job postings. Did you get any valuable feedback from anyone? We actually got, <laughs> I got one email from one, one person who was an acquaintance. I barely knew him. And he, he wrote just this tome of an email he just like, lit it up. here yeah. here here's what you're doing right and i love this part and this part but then like what i'd like to do here and then at the end of it he's like you know what and he just he wrote this thing out and i'm like oh <laughs> and yeah. he's like you know what take any bit of that you like and don't like and and i it's, it's for you and i set up a call with him later to thank him for it and we talked about it a little more and he was just like he was just super excited to participate a lot yeah. of people like to be asked their opinion right totally this is an interesting bit just getting getting feedback on your job postings from others 
and totally. seeing angles that you're not that you're not necessarily looking at. This this is a really good point. I just don't want to tangent too far from my original questions. So this like like management ritual. Um, just in case anyone doesn't know, what is a Trello board? Trello board's like a, a project management right software, right? Cool. Super simple. simple, super simple, really rudimentary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's Perfect great. So we, like um, <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, so we use like ritualistically use a project management software. I think it, it's not super common, uh, maybe in the in the in the contracting space, but f- to attack a really important internal project like this, I think it is something that's super powerful because uh, because it allows you to build a bit of a project path or like a critical path of what we need to do from where we're here now yeah. to where we need to go. And it's interesting with recruiting because a lot of the things that Brett's talking about here, I'd call them like infrastructural elements. Yeah. You need certain infrastructure that you're going to need forever really in this business to be able to recruit effectively. Like if you don't have every role thought through that you recruit for, uh, developing its ideal candidate profile, uh, developing its job postings, developing, we'll talk about this later and I really, really want to get into this, the way you do recruitment related like assets, like photo, video, uh, a web page, all this kind of stuff. You got to build that out and that really requires project management because you can break down the development of each one of these things into a whole bunch of subtasks. Yeah. And if you're not managing week to week, an hour, typically some often more, yeah. the flow through of these things, like, are they all moving forward? Are we going to do this, you know, the week of September the 4th, and this next one is going to start the week of the 11th, and so on and so forth. You've got to be able to map these out and then and then project manage their forward movement. With, with rigor. With rigor. Like, yeah. that, this is not a... <clears throat> people are generally better problem identifiers than they are problem <laughs> They're so solvers. good at it. Yeah, <laughs> They're they so are good at solvers. it. This, like, this is, like we say this all the time on the show, like ideas are the easy part. Like most people know that they've got like a vision. It's like the doing of it yeah. week in, week out. And so you've used Trello, which is great. Some companies may use Monday.com. We use Asana. There's thousands out there. You, I, you know, you don't need to go out and get a tech, piece of technology to do this so you could do this on a whiteboard and post it notes it's like mm-hmm. the, the so do it in whatever whatever model you have available to you but the point is this isn't something that you do when you're inspired in the moment and then forget about it is a weeks long months long years long process that you have to drive and i think that that's a really important point not to blow past that's why having the metrics flushed out clearly and organized along a calendar is good that's why having laura as a point person to delegate stuff to is good because you won't be able to manage all of this i um, can't do all this by myself no chance no way so i want to um would you let's let's move along here to something that i really want to go deep on but i'll just pause quickly and mention uh to listeners if there is any part of that last section uh the brain dumping of tactics reverse engineering the funnel raising wages and benefits uh revising ideal candidate profiles job postings whatever if there was something about that that you have a question on now would be a great time to go and post that in the q a section of this platform we will circle back to it yeah. okay so Benji, just before we go on one more final thing before we move off this that i want to highlight this rec- making a recruitment a top focus so many entrepreneurs identify the issue like like this is difficult we've got a problem here but when we like how many of you have a recurring weekly two-hour meeting with i with point people that are in charge of that on your team with you very few very few right and if you don't have that level of of focus on it of course you're not going to move results forward right because that is really what it takes so i just want to highlight that like weekly recruitment meeting if this is a very serious problem that's needed to kick things off. So you'd mentioned um, earlier, and you've brought it up a couple times. I, I think you had already at some point made the decision to revise your what you were going to do, kind of a new website. Need a new website. Yeah, but um, you made the decision to create a work with us page with a with a culture video and job postings. It's really really cool. Um, Tell us a little bit more about the dis- why you, you know how you came up with that idea, how you built it out. Talk to us about the the work with us page a bit. Yeah, the work with us page was really the, the keystone of the whole like the infrastructure, infrastructure like assets. Yeah, right. And it actually propelled us. I didn't budget originally to do let's say the recruitment video that mm-hmm. we did with Will, and 
um, it came up and it's, of course, that's, you get into these marketing things and in this case for recruitment, but yep. marketing Will, things. Will is a video guy? Or? Will was our videographer and right. man, he crushed it. I mean, he made, it was like such a high quality piece. It's was, on your website right now? It's on the website there? right now. Yeah. Cool. Um, you, so take us through it. You, you hired Will. He, he came over. You guys shot a video. Like just take us through this whole page top to bottom and, and it's build out. This was one of the first things that we actually started. Laura and I started working. I was like, okay, let's start planning out what, what, a, what a shoot day is going to look like for Will to get this footage. This was in August. And let's make sure that we have the, the people, the, the proper job. Uh, make sure we have a perfect day of weather in mm -hmm. Seattle. Yeah, and it, actually we did catch one, but you know it's good to be lucky, right? <laughs> so and where did this even come from? Like, why were you doing a video? Uh, we were doing a video because that was it was pointed out that that's like it's such a powerful piece of content that if if pictures worth a thousand words, a yeah. moving pictures worth a million, ten, yeah, a hundred. I don't totally. know. <laughs> yeah. So what's, pretty, what's the video of it, it basically highlights who we are. As a as company, a, like a who's team. Renova? Yeah. yeah, as a team, as what it, what it what it feels like, what it looks like to, to a day in the life of Renova. What some of the some of the there's some cool hero shots of got guys like uh, surface clean pressure washing on top of this beautiful home that yeah. overlooking the lake. Right, and um, it's 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 and there, it's it's set to like this really high energy music. Obviously, we're trying to attract like a pretty young, energetic, youthful person yeah. for these roles. So totally. this just feels right. And yeah. we, you're, you speak on it too. I think I've, I, I watched it a couple months ago. Like you, you're there talking about the vision, the team, core values. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're selling it. I'm just talking. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. just like right now, I'm just here and I'm just running my mouth. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, he's interviewing me. There's like five questions. I talked for two hours to get a two and a half minute video. Right. Right. And then he cuts it up. He cuts it up and masterfully makes me look really nice and sound really cool. And, <laughs> and he makes it. Turns, yeah, that's it. That's and the product. The point of this video is this is the first thing that you see when you click on the work with us page for Renova. It takes you right to this pretty page. There's graphic design and then there's an embedded video that you click. It's three minutes long and it's just going through why it's so awesome to work with you guys. Yeah. And the second you click it, it's just like this thumping do, do music is gone and it's like it's, it's well, just really on point. Exactly. Um, it's a good first look. I guess you could say beneath that, uh, beneath the video, there is all of your open roles available. Correct? Yeah, all the, there's five positions. So your job postings sit right there. They do. Yeah, they're all concentrated right there as well. Can you? T one thing I've noticed that's really cool about how you set this up. Not only the job postings, which if you read them, they're extremely appealing. The core values are baked right in. They very clearly are designed to speak to a specific kind of person. If you, if you go check out this landing page, which I encourage you to do at some point today or tomorrow, like go have a look at what we're, what we're speaking about. Um, uh, the postings are awesome, but what's really cool is you can actually click like, I think it says apply now or connect or something. And it pushes them to a type form, I believe. Exactly. And that makes um, an application. It's an application form. If you guys don't know what type form is, it's a really, really simple piece of software that allows you to basically embed like, um, questionnaires on simple landing on simple websites. And so, um, the, the reason I wanted to bring that up is it's not like, you know, hey, send us an email with a CV and a cover letter and your life story. It's Making an it easy extremely for low friction process. You watch the video, you're like, oh, this Brett guy's kind of cool. You see the landing page, you're like that job sounds kind of cool. You click the button and it's literally like, tell us your name. Tell us where you live. Tell us why you think you'd be a great fit, blah, 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 blah. You Just can do it apply right in like 10 minutes. Yeah. And I, you know, people might hear that and go, well. I think well, there's like 11 questions. It's just like, bop, 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 super simple stuff. It's yeah. smooth though. And it Very rolls good. and it's visually, it's, it's cool. Like it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely. Form's really nice. It shoots a little question in front of you. Whatever. Yeah. If someone on our team right now could just put a link into type form, you can, you can just click on that and check it out. But it's, uh, it's certainly pretty slick and, and makes it easy. I would, I would also consider this another one of these like infrastructural elements, right? If you're going to be, if you're serious about recruiting, you need a good recruiting page on real estate that you own, like yeah. on your own website, right? As opposed to just on like Indeed or whatever. Um, you need some of these really good assets. Like we talked about video, but you guys did a photo shoot there as well, mm -hmm. right? To get like photo assets for a really good landing page and for all sorts of different kinds of ads. These are all infrastructural elements that are worth focusing on if you're serious about being a good recruiter. And the value of that works for both marketing customers and recruitment. Oh, 100%. So it's yeah. really, it, it goes, it stuff goes everywhere. Yeah. yeah. 
So you have this page. It's very sexy. It's it's very clear what it's meant to do. It's low friction. I want to use that word again. It's easy to apply. You're not asking them to leave the page and go spend 30 minutes doing something else. It's all in one space. Um, you you did something cool with like, you had Will also create some short clips and use that to promote. What did you do to like, what was the strategy to get eyeballs on this page? Cause it could just sit mm. on the a backlink of your website yeah. forever and no one would get to it. Right. How did you drive traffic to it? So we drove traffic, so Will's idea and he suggested, he's like, look, I'm, I'm getting all this footage. We'll do a two and a half minute recruitment video. Which like goes the on flagship, the long the, one. The, the long version, yeah. yep. And then I'm gonna do two 15 second ones okay. that are designed to go into social media ads. Simple as that. They're 15 seconds, same condensed idea. And then it's like, slight, you know, this looks cool to you. Swipe this way and, and it, it will take you to the landing page. Was this on, do you remember it was like Instagram? This would be Facebook? Instagram. This would be Facebook primarily. Um, and we did a few boosted Facebook ads. And it's like the first time we sent that out, it's like 800 people saw this yesterday. I remember okay. Laura being like, yeah, like 800 people saw the little video that we just, just put out. And I was like, that seems yeah. like a lot of people when you only need 14. Totally. This 15. is a huge brand play. And I don't mean like, I'm not talking the consumer brand from an employer brand. This stuff's really important. So if you're in the business, yeah. especially of hiring younger people, which a lot of us are in the contracting space, mm -hmm. being able to target them effectively on Facebook, on Instagram, through great images, great videos is super important, not just for, for generating applications, but for your employer brand as a whole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, did you get, um, tell us about, you, you mentioned something this morning about like links. You had, uh, you had like short links created for the site so that it could be like distributed really easily. Yeah, as well. that, that was my, my hang up was like, I want to, this to be so simple and easy for our team to be able to share this link because we make an incentive program for them. And yeah. so then Laura, one of the pieces that Laura worked on was like, and at this point you get a link and you put it in a text, you put it in, it doesn't matter. And it, shows up and it's got our logo next to it. And I'm like, I don't know how that works, but that's awesome. It looks so clean. And so let's start sharing this. Let's mm -hmm. get this out there. I needed that because I wanted to make sure it looked nice and I could share it simply with, with my network. Mm -hmm. But that doubled and works really nicely with all our employees and everyone else to Look, share. Looking back on the build out of this, you've, um, you, you know, you obviously, uh, you, there's some graphic design, there's some copy that needed to be written. There's video, um, uh, was this expensive to build? And when you look back on it, like talk about sort of the, from an ROI perspective, like worth the money? Short answer. Yes, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Um, there was an investment involved in terms of time. Yeah. There was an investment involved in terms of capital and money and energy. And the beauty of most of that work, like you were saying, is just like this is infrastructure assets. You that build it once. And you build it's it once. super solid. You yeah. build it once. Yeah, for sure. And you build on it. It's like a pyramid. You get a nice strong foundation. Yeah, great, and strong foundation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's just drive that point home one more time because I think this is such an important bit, right? Here's, here's, I think, the view on this one, okay? We run a contracting company. Really, you're in the business of acquiring talent mm -hmm. and leading and managing or organizing human labor. Like that's in a nutshell what we do. That's it. So... If you're going to be in the business of acquiring labor and organizing it, you've you've got to get good at consistently being able to recruit. That's just like it's a key part of your job description mm -hmm. as a business owner. And to make life easy for yourself for not just this year, but the next five years, the next 10 years, build that good foundation. So some of the things that come to mind, you got to have organized a great photo shoot with your people because you need those those, th those, those visual assets for the ads, for the landing pages, all that kind of stuff. You need a video. You need a main highlight reel because most of your competitors aren't going to have one and people are going to be sold into the day of the life of in a way better way. Mm -hmm. So you need a video built and ideally that gets cut up into some short clips too that you can use for boosted ads. Um, you need your own real estate. Don't go just rent land on other places. Build on your own land. So you need... Uh, you need your own website page that's focused on recruiting. You can still rent some land too. You absolutely you can still do. go you post do, but on you Indeed, do both. You, but you need to do both. You need to yeah. do both. Yeah, you, you got to have all of your recruitment stuff on your own website in addition to all the promotion you do. You need a good uh, Facebook, Instagram page, not just for your customers, but for your prospects because your prospects are on those platforms and that's where you can boost and market those posts. You need a slick application 
that makes it easy. And then a really nice structure of shareable links. Totally. Ideally, that you can track where stuff is coming from. Those are those are the great pieces of infrastructure. Like Brett said, it takes a bit of time, it takes a bit of money, but this is going to pay back in dividends. And I can attest to this as well because we do all of this too. If you go to Breakthrough Academy, if you throw in Google right now, Breakthrough Academy, join the team, you'll see on our page, right? We've got a beautiful page. We've got a highlight recruitment video. We've got interviews with different people in our team from different events. I speak into this video a bunch. We've got tons of great photos. Job ads are there. Um, from personal experience, I, I will echo everything that Brett said. It, it pays back in dividends. You just, you got to build it well once. I've got some good news to add on this as well, which is that in the context of the home services, trades, construction space, when it comes to employer brand, the competition is not stiff. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of competitors out there. There are a lot of businesses fighting over the same talent pool, but the degree to which they've invested in this stuff is minimal. I would say it's negligible. And if you don't believe me, Go to Indeed right now and look at construction jobs in your market. That's who you're competing. Those are the those are the people who you are competing against to capture the attention, right? So it's like... Paints are needed tomorrow. Bring your boots. There, There is a huge competitive advantage here in the sense that really no one is doing this exceptionally well, which is why yeah. we wanted to have Brett on because he's like invested so heavily in this. Um, it, it will make a difference. It's not overnight, but this is the point you're making about, you know, yes, it's some upfront cost to build the infrastructure, but now you have it for the long run. And I'm sure that there's probably bells and whistles you're going to add to it this year oh, and next year and, yeah, and keep making sure. it even better. So yeah. I just, I, I love that point. If you haven't checked out Brett's website, uh, we'll, we'll include a, yeah. include a link to go do that. I want to, it's, it's time and money. So just one final point there, sure. Benji, it's time and money, but you got to also project manage it into existence, right? One of the things things I think about in business a lot is like some things are pretty easy where you deploy money and get a certain result, mm -hmm. right? That's relatively simple. What I think is way more complicated is where you got to deploy money, but you have to also project manage it. That's the hard part that people won't do. If it was easy as like, hey, Brett, $40,000 and all of this will be built for you overnight. Anyone would take that. Just cut the check. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But th this is way harder because you have to actually, you've got to get you your Trello board set up. You've you got to execute work with it. Laura. You've right. got to hold accountability to meetings. You've got to think through the ideal candidate profile. To yourself. You've got to hold yourself yeah. accountable. Totally. So so that's the important part, right? And and that's why I think, Benji, to what you said, most don't do it because it's not as simple as just put money into it. you got to put your own effort into it. Totally. Um, one other tactic I really want to explore and then we'll kind of close out this interview in the next 15 minutes or so is the incentivized employee referral system. Mm -hmm. um, I think you got this from one of our members, uh, This the, the original idea. Um, but t tell us about how you, most people probably understand that concept. Yours is structured a little bit differently. So it's like recurring. Take us through like how you designed that and the effects that it had. Yeah, this was important. Big, big piece of our success for sure. Ryan Lermit. <laughs> big shout out. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. If you're watching. He pointed out this idea and he's he's usually in my small group. And what it boils down to is as opposed to just giving an incentive for a one-time incentive to be like, hey, if we hire your uh, referral to work with mm -hmm. us, you get $500. We right. like I know a guy named Steve. Yeah. I, I tell you about Steve and you hire him. You I, I, get, Steve out. gets through training. He gets, yeah, yeah you get $500. That's nice. That's good. We have that too. We have a finder's fee, which is a little separate thing. But for our internal employees, we actually set it up in such a way based on kind of how headhunters work. And what they'll do is a monthly reoccurring um, incentive. So if Forever, we have- Forever, as long as that person's there. As long as they're both there together. Ah. So now we got two employees there together and there's a little tension there. There's like that power of community right. involved, right? So as long as the referrer who gets the bonus, they get a hundred bucks a month. In perpetuity, like for as long as those two are together. If they stay with us for 10 years, yes, I'm totally, yeah, for yeah. If the two of them stay Money here well for spent. 10, yes, please, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, exactly. So um, that's that's the program. It's relatively simple and people can, uh, like $1,200, I, I just got to find a couple people to come work with me and now I get to work with my friend. Nice. People that people notice, like the, they, their ears perked up and they they, they actually like were Based on their behaviors? Yeah. yeah. I'd say 80% of our success probably mm -hmm. revolved around some tangent of that, this program. Is this, how, how, um, 
how thoroughly does this message need to be broadcast to the team? Are you hammering them over the head with this like every week or did you just tell them once and the result Yeah, happens? what do you think? Yeah, I just mentioned it offhand and then everyone just went out and did it. <laughs> Absolutely not. That's not how anything works. Right. I'd say I, I keep telling everyone seven times you have to say something to someone seven times before they are like, oh, I, I guess he's serious about this. Mm -hmm. So the answer is we would do, we've always been really good about throwing barbecues. That's one of our things. Hamburger mm -hmm. hump day is what we call it. And right. We, you know, I get like all we every week throughout this. Not season. every week. Yeah. Through uh, every other or every third week, okay. I'll, I'll pull out the Weber and we'll, we'll have some, we kind of have a set, like some cheeseburgers, some salmon burgers and, and some Boca burgers Deadly. or whatever. Got a little Caesar salad, got some beverages of choice. And um, yeah, your we get into it for you guys. I, I get out there and I love barbecue and food. So yeah, I serving. So I'm wondering where this comes in, but like serving someone food is like here, I care about you. Mm -hmm. Right. And I do. I absolutely do. I'm going to feed you. That makes people happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They come home from work all day and I got a hot, whatever they want to eat mm -hmm. and a cold beverage for them to drink. And they sit down in a, in a lounge chair and we do a quick little kind of team huddle. And we're like, okay, you guys, we need this many more people. Don't forget the incentives here. Think about this. Think about this. Think about that. Right. And we say that over and over again. So you use you use that hamburger hump day as a way to ce celebrate and serve and serve your team. It's also a nifty way to like remind them about the recruiting gap that still exists. And here's what it's you a stand constant the gate. reiteration, though. Yeah. Exactly. And, just, and of the incentive program. Yeah, the theme is a the theme, right? So you, yeah. you you get on this like we are on this recruitment theme, and it's like. If we get these recruitment numbers, then we got this. We're on. Yeah. Did did you tap into um did you tap into like a really good network through this strategy? Like some like I've done this before where you you kind of meet one person, they introduce you to two more, and then all of a sudden you've got like three crews built out. And it doesn't always happen that way, but I'm wondering if you had some good fortune when it came to this networking strategy. That's essentially exactly what happened mm -hmm. for us. Is um it was actually Laura who found the first, like the, uh, what do you call it? Patient zero, we'll say. But <laughs> patient zero in this case wasn't, they didn't want to, they didn't like Seattle. They didn't want to work in Seattle, but all his friends, he had a bunch of friends here. So he got one other person, I, I believe it was Kinsley. And then from there, it, it was like, it was, like it was one of those mother loads. Like they, they're just yeah. like their culture, yeah. their style. You hit pay dirt. You You're like, pay dirt. I was this like, is it. Ooh, this is good. But this the first, good. the first person you met didn't even work for you. I've never met him, but it was the, so this is yeah, the power, this is the power him. of like, you gotta be thorough. It's not, it's often not the first person. And so that the person, person got, they know the, that they know it's like that person got a finder's fee. They got $500. Sure. And went off $500 to else. well spent. Cause then that built out, you know, a yeah. crew of. Or totally. So interesting. Yeah. So it's, what's cool here is you combine a really good reward structure for your team. And just to reiterate it one more time, so it's basically the, the referrer gets a hundred bucks a month in perpetuity as long as they keep working for you while their referee is still there. Mm -hmm. That's right. hundred bucks every month added to their paycheck. Yeah. So you've got this really great reward system, but you've also paired it with a great recruiting brand with the website and the video because that's where the referrer sends their referees. Yeah. You've right. made it easy for them. You made it easy for yeah. them. To, to sell the place of work. You're not saying, hey, you need to go out and pitch all your friends. Here's a link. Here's a site. Here's some scripted stuff. Just like anyone that you think might be a fit, get this in front of them. You've made it, inc made it so easy super, for them. Super, super simple for them to, to expand the, the, the message. Um, okay, a couple, couple questions here. Um, what were the results? We've kind of gone through tactics and ideas and strategy. Let's go through the hard numbers. What ended up happening when all of this stuff was implemented? By the middle of November, we hit our 16. I think we actually got 17 or 18 on hired. And we had the field staff that we needed to execute the plan that we Amazing. were going to do for production. We, the, the, the short answer is hit. We, we nailed it. It worked. This past it November. This, this past fall. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. To the point where we had more people that we, that we had uh, hired going into January and the beginning of this year. You actually had a surplus. You're like, whoa. We, we had a surplus. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So where you had two like coming out of it, <laughs> now you've got. Well, at the, at the time going uh, at the new year, we had 15 or 16 and we we're like, we could use maybe 10. Yeah. Something like that. Cool. Have you. It's have a nice you, position to be in. Nice, nice place to find yourself. Totally. <laughs> and one I think a lot of people are jealous of. Like, I, d I don't know that many people who have said, you know, we have more than we need when it comes to people anytime in the last 10 years. But. Um, it's, it's, it's super impressive, Brett. And, and like, 
I love that. I love the tactical stuff. I love the ideas, but the thing I like the most is the rigor that you've kind of solved this problem with. I wonder if you could speak quickly to the value of how, and you mentioned a second ago, I got the idea from Ryan Lerman, who's another BTA member. Like what is the value of having a coach, but also a peer group to help you generate these ideas to help hold you accountable to the process? Like where does that fit into this whole picture? plays a big role, in my opinion, in your perspective. Mm. It widens your horizon to what is out there and what's available. So if you're an isolated entrepreneur, which many of us can be, Mm -hmm. then you're stuck in your own little mind. And that's not a safe place, certainly not a safe place for me. So all of a sudden you have this group of people who's has, they have all the same problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're suffering all the same pain points. It's, it's almost laughable. And, and the more painful it is, the more it's like, well, at least I'm not alone. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the power of that, and then to have a coach to like talk through on a, on a regular cadence, same thing, that's accountability, right? It's like, well, what's important? Totally. Recruitment. Okay. What are you doing? What are your action steps? This, this, this. Okay. Go. Two weeks later, we run it back. How'd you do? Okay. We did this. We actually didn't need to do this because it worked so well, blah, blah, blah. And mm-hmm. on it went. It was yeah, super powerful. I think the um, the one of the blessings, but simultaneously one of the biggest curses of being an entrepreneur is that you have no one to report to. It's like oh, you can do whatever so you dangerous. want. So right? It's dangerous. like it's like that's like the allure in the first place because you're like I don't want a boss. I want to do this on my own. And then you get to a certain stage where you're like I kind of want a boss. I don't want to do this on my own anymore. <laughs> mm. um, and it's so I think yeah I I you know. Ryan's an amazing coach. For those of you that are going to do a breakout with him, you're very lucky. Uh, super smart guy. Ask him a lot of questions. But so are all, so are all the BTA coaches. And I think that there's just there's value in having a touch point with a you know a group of peers that you trust and you admire. You don't want to be the person who's constantly not delivering on the promises you made in the last week. And I just think that there's some real like besides the stimulation of ideas and creative the thinking, social pressure. Yeah, it's like that's no, like, it, a little guilt goes a, a long so, way. It's, it's a not good so thing. much like if you say out loud, "I'm going to do this" in front of a group of people, and then next week you have to go to that group of people and say, "I didn't do that." You know what you do? It's, it's less painful. Just do what you said you yeah, were going to do. Just get it done. Which is why at the end of this, we're going to be making some commitments to our recruiting funnel, but more on that later. Um, okay. Question here to close, uh, Brett. Many people that are on this live event and many people that will listen to the recording later on are likely listening um, in the situation that you were in 18 months ago. There's a huge gap. They're feeling overwhelmed. They're not really sure where to start this, you know, and especially with recruiting, it's, it's kind of a, um, it's, it's such a weighty pressure because your entire business relies on this. If you don't fix this, you're, you're really screwed. What advice do you have for entrepreneurs who are staring down the barrel of a big problem like this based on what you've learned over the last 18 months of solving this yourself? Uh, first thing, start where you're at really important. Like all these ideas we just shared, it's not worth jumping to step four if you're at step one. Right. So start where you're at, and that's fine. That's a good place to be. Whatever you have been doing, as little of that as it is, isn't working or or not working well enough. So start doing new things Mm -hmm. and take action. Like put your energy and focus and take some action. Mm -hmm. Take responsibility for it and really focus your energy on what you're trying to solve. 100%. 100%. I think there's there's so many people, especially in this industry, that uh, put a lot of blame on external problems. That's easy to do. Yeah, 100%. COVID, government subsidies, millennials. Uh, millennials. Oh, yeah, millennials. It's, it's like a, millennials. Benji's favorite fashion talk. talking point. <laughs> uh, but, um, they suck. But, Get them out of here. <laughs> you millennial yeah yeah. Um, we all are. but uh but but the key point is is like when you do put huge energy into something that's when problems get solved and very few people go and do that to build all these infrastructural elements to build the advertising campaigns and execute on them to hold accountability through this with your team the incentive programs to continuously drive that and spend hour a couple hours on it every single week very few do it and and i will add just one more thing i think that there's something very powerful about thinking through what you stand for as an employer and your commitments to your people and to put that out to the world yeah. and to put out what, who you are, what you're here to do in terms of developing your people 
and uh, and what you want to achieve as a business when it comes to your employer and your employer brand and, and, and the goals you need to hit when it comes to hiring and employment and to really put that out to the world is th- th- there's something there where every time that I've done that really intentionally, it comes back. Intentional. That's a good word for yeah. it. And that piece about values, which we didn't dig into too far. Mm, if yeah. you haven't looked inward to figure out what you're doing here and your purpose. Yeah. Okay. That's where you have to start. hundred percent. And then you put your flag in the ground, which what we did we didn't get probably the number of applicants. We didn't get 100 or 75 or whatever candidates come through. But the ones we did come through, we were clearly speaking to them. Because totally. the feedback was like, oh, we saw your post. Totally. On and the, the, you guys look awesome. Yeah. And the proof is in the pudding. If anyone goes right now to Breakthrough Academy's website and checks out or join the team page and you watch that video that I'm in, you'll see I speak to our values and what we're here to do. And it's the same with yours. That's it. Yeah. The inspirational point that I want to extract and make sure is clear is Brett made no excuses and didn't blame external problems as seductive and as easy and as satisfying and as comforting as it can be to give in to the stories. Yeah. Uh, you stuck to the facts. The fact is it's harder to recruit than it was. You're mm-hmm. going to need to spend more than you did before. Mm-hmm. You're going to need to work harder at this. Those are facts. You know, millennials suck and the government is ruined the workforce and COVID is ruined the world and it's all over. Those are stories. And it's really important to know the difference between the two and stay in the facts column. Stick to the, the facts. The stories, the, you know, they're seductive. You will shoot yourself in the foot before you've been trying to solve this problem. And I, I, I can't think of a more insurmountable recruiting challenge than 14 people in a matter of months. So um, it's super impressive, man. I really want to thank you for sharing all of this. Like so many good takeaways, even for me, my, my page is full of notes. And I, I hope for, um, those of you at home watching and listening that, that, uh, you have some tactical nuggets, but, but also just like some inspiration on this as well. Um, so thanks for sharing, man. Happy to do it. Happy to be here. Thanks guys. Nice job, man. Very yeah, good. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Contractor Evolution. If you've already subscribed to our channel, consider sharing this episode with another contractor who you think needs to hear it.